All right, guys, how you doing? Um, we'll do another little video to kind of help the, uh, you know, new people getting into the trade and stuff. Like I said, I've got a couple of them that I talk to through text message and emails and stuff like that. Today, what I want to talk about is uh, pistons versus DXVs. Okay. This is a big debate, especially around here, um, especially for train guys, carrier guys, stuff like that. They're going to tell you that this is the way to go, this TXV right here. And this one's all taped up because I found the customer's previous one bad, so I replaced it. And then uh, about a year later or so, or... Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not about like a, two months later. He just decided out of the blue that he wanted to change out his system. So I kept TXV for an emergency because I had just put it on. This is for Bryant Carrier Products right here. This come off of Bryant. And uh, which leads me to my point. People are going to say, oh, TXV is the way to go. Well, I mean, is it really? What's wrong with a piston? I mean, what's wrong with that? Um, let me put it to you like this. How many times have you heard somebody say, Oh man, I gotta go, this guy's got a bad expansion valve. Or you go to the customer and say, You got a bad expansion valve. That's, you know, running high head pressure, stuff like that. When's the last time you walked up to somebody and said, hey, you got a bad piston. Your piston's bad. I never have. The point that I'm trying to make is, is that I'm not going to sit here and dog expansion valves, but they break. Okay? They do break. They fail. They will fail. Now... On high efficiency stuff, two stage, 18 sear, 16 sear, training American standards, 20 sear, Linux is 21 sear, whatever they got. I don't even keep up with Linux. Uh, Carrier, I think they got like a 23 sear, maybe. I'm 21 sear. I don't really keep up with Carrier that much either. But um, you got to have it. You're going to have to use this on your high efficiency stuff and I understand that two stage but where I come from where I live at and I would take a pretty good bit of the world too because I've seen a bunch of it you know so I join YouTube and with you guys I mean I've seen a bunch of you guys videos in different parts of the country and y'all are doing mostly 13 seer equipment like I am just like me and let me tell you something with 13 seer this is all you need there is no reason for this TXV on 13 sear now to my knowledge from being a train dealer train comes from the factory with a TXV for everything it doesn't matter if it's 13 sear 14 15 blah 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 the, the evaporators and the air handlers come with TXVs built in them I believe Carrier does too. Um, I had talked to a Carrier rep recently about becoming a Carrier dealer. And uh, he was telling me some stuff. And I, th I think that Carrier has moved TXVs also on everything. Now, I know from being a Arco Air dealer, which is ICP, um... When I was putting those in, the cased coils were, um, they all, they came TXV. The air handlers came with a piston, unless you requested a TXV. Then you had to step up to the next air handler to get a TXV. Now, Reem and Rude, they come from the factory with a TXV on everything. Doesn't matter if it's 13, 14, blah, 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 blah. It's it's 
it's it's a TXV, okay? Um, another reason I like Goodman and Amana. When you buy a Goodman or an Amana system, you buy the air handler, the condensing unit, or you buy the air handler, the gas furnace, and the evaporator coil. You're going to have this taped to the condensing unit right underneath the electrical panel. That is telling you no matter what coil you are using, that is the piston that they want in that coil. Okay? Because that is the piston that they want to work with that condensing unit. So all you do, you 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 peel the little bag off, you tear it open, you grab your piston, and you go and you stick it in your coil. And you're done. Now Goodman even sit Goodman and Amana even allow you to do that up on their 15 series equipment. Anything that's single stage, Goodman says this is all you need. Right here is a piston. Now when you step up to Goodman and Amana 16 and 18 sear, you have to buy what is known as the model number AVPTC air handler. And those coils come, those air handlers come with a TXV from the factory. Nothing you can do about it. It's already in the air handler. Which, you know, with two-stage equipment, you got to have it. You do. So, um, but with 13, 14, and 15 at Goodman and Amana, that's that's that they say that's all you need right there that's all you need so now like i said um these 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 can be good they're easy to charge you know like with train um you got uh a, a um shit i'm losing my uh train of thought here um your your design subcooling it's on the model number tag on train i remember that from being a train dealer i believe it's also like that with carrier it tells you what your subcooling is supposed to be so that makes it really easy to charge these but the bad thing about it is is that these and listen to what i'm saying out there guys these break okay they do they break it you will go back one day and replace this. If not you, the customer's going to start using somebody else. They're going to go change it, okay? You will be back to change this out. I mean, I had a train system that I did. I did a th I did a, uh, a 12,000 square foot house, I think, with three systems in it. Brand new at construction. Roughed the house in, ran all the duct and, you know, set the furnaces and the coils and ran the line set and all that good stuff. Went back a couple months later to set the condensing units and start up the systems. Hell, I had one of them from the factory. This thing was stuck. I mean, it was it was gone. Took it out, replaced it, worked fine. So, my point is, is that I'm going to try to keep this video short because I'm looking at my camera here and I'm kind of blabbing on. But the point of it is, am I saying this is a piece of crap? No, not really. Am I saying it's going to break? You damn right, it will break. One day. You will change this. Now, I have never been on a repair job and, and this break, okay? Th this can't break. I mean, it's, there it is. The refrigerant's got to flow. The only, the only thing that you could find wrong is if the body assembly before that comes into the piston, there's a screen in that copper, if it would get plugged up. But if you got your dryers and you you know take your proper installation practices, then that won't happen. And the only other thing that could happen to this is if something would get caught up in that little hole right there. But like I said, if you take in your proper installation practices, that won't happen. I, I because I've never been back on a piston. Um. So I guess I'll end it there, and uh, I just thought I'd give uh. You know some advice, and. Just to let you know, you know, the difference between these two fellas right here. Um, basically, the way I look at it is, as long as you're staying single stage equipment and you're not doing two stage, this is all you need. It's all you need is a piston. It won't break and won't have no worries. 
you go to two stage two speed compressor variable speed blower motor all that good stuff that's when you go to TXV okay but this on 13 here no reason no reason for this at all so hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh there'll be more to come uh just got back from vacation and uh things have been hectic been busy so but i got some stuff coming up let's get some good video for you guys so uh thanks for watching and y'all take care